Welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. Forced labor, beatings, electric shocks, torture. Those are some of the words that describe life at the Ma Sanjia labor camp in Liaoning province, according to an explosive new expose that was published in China. Now, you may have heard of Ma Sanjia before. Last year, a woman in Oregon found a note from a prisoner in China in her box of Kmart Halloween decorations. Now, that prisoner was forced to make those decorations at Ma Sanjia. So Ma Sanjia is now in the headlines again after Lens magazine published a detailed account of li- the life of inmates there. But one thing that the magazine didn't mention were who those inmates were. And one of the reasons for that might be because a large number of inmates at Ma Sanjia, as at other labor camps in China, are practitioners of Falun Gong, the spiritual practice that's currently persecuted in the country. Here today to talk about this, we have Levi Browdy, the executive director of the Falun Dafa Information Center, which monitors human rights conditions in China. Levi, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So what was your reaction to the uh, Lens Magazine article? Well, I was at first a little bit surprised that such a piece would come out inside China. The content of the report was not a surprise at all. It covered parts of a larger set of abuses that we have been reporting for the last 10 years. So it really confirmed many of, the, many of the abuses that we've documented. But again, the first reaction was surprised that a Chinese media inside the country was able to get this published, albeit for a very short period of time. Now, I want to get your take on the significance of that. But first, mm. what about Ma Sanjia is uh, kind of makes it like so important to talk about? Ma Sanjia is one of the most notorious labor camps in China. And there's a lot of labor camps in China that are very harsh. Um, What makes it notorious is uh, a couple things. It is literally the training ground for how to persecute, how to torture, how to break down the will of an inmate so that you can get them to give up their belief and pledge allegiance to the Communist Party. They do it better than any other labor camp around the country and in fact bring in officials from other labor camps to learn how to do this. So you're talking about a labor camp that is literally refining and teaching torture and other types of abuses. Um, It's also a labor camp that's directly connected to the 610 office, which is a secret office that reports directly to the uh, Politburo, the Communist Party. It's outside, it's extra legal, it's outside the government, and its main uh, focus is to persecute Falun Gong and, and, and other groups inside the country. So since Ma Sanjia is so notorious, um, what do you think the effect of this Lens article is going to be inside and outside China? Very difficult to say inside China because, again, it was, it, was, it was published and then it was taken off. And then, so it's, it, clearly there are voices inside China trying to get these abuses out. And I think it's very important for those in the West to step up and take that momentum and dig deeper into the story. There's much more about Ma Sanjia than was reported in the, in the report, although it was, it was a good initial start. It's important that we don't let it stop there, because clearly there's a lot of conflict in China about some people trying to get this report out, and we need to carry that out. So what are some of the things that weren't mentioned in the report? What wasn't mentioned in the report is the connection to the 610. What wasn't mentioned was um, that it is sort of a training ground for torture and abuses, and it is the main place where people kind of refine that practice. And just some of the more horrific abuses, throwing women into males' jail cells where they're gang raped, um, other types of really horrific abuses weren't covered in the magazine. Now let me ask about a larger issue here. A lot of the kind of Western media covering the story, the fact that a a magazine inside China was able to publish this kind of expose saying maybe this hints at labor camp reform. What's your take on that? Um, we have to be very careful with that because we have to look at is the labor, what is the purpose of the labor camp reform? Is it to truly open up China and make it a more free and open place? Or is it about trying to give the Communist Party there a better reputation because they get such a bad uh, reputation from the labor camps, necessarily so? Uh, one, of th- one of the patterns we've seen in the, in, for the last year, from January to April of this year, we've seen twice as many Falun Gong practitioners sentenced to long-term prison as they were in the past year. So what's disturbing is they might be taking people out of labor camps and just throwing them into prison camps, and it's essentially a PR move. There's not real reform happening. So we've got to be real careful when investigating labor camp and labor camp reform that we understand why it's happening and what is the actual effect for the inmates. Thank you, Levi, for joining us to talk about that. Thanks for having me. Now, even though that Lens magazine article did not mention Falun Gong by name, as Levi just said, it did confirm what 
uh, Falun Gong practitioners have been saying about the conditions at Masanjia labor camp. Now, if this has been going on for more than 10 years, why is this report only coming out now? And what does it mean for the political situation in China? Here today to talk about this, we have NDD senior China analyst Heng He. So Heng He, you know, every time we see something about this article, people are saying, you know, it's the first mainland Chinese media to cover this topic. You know, what's the significance of that? You know, in a way, was Lens Magazine given permission to talk about this? Uh, if Lens Mag Magazine didn't give the permission to talk about this, you cannot explain, uh, you know, the other website all published this, uh, you know, uh, article for at least uh, more than one day. So this is, uh, uh, the significance is uh, related to the uh, rumor about uh, uh, either abandon this uh, uh, re-education through labor system or reform. So you're saying that because, I mean, Lens Magazine uh, might have acted on its own, but because everybody else was also carrying their article, that's yes. more significant. Yes. So uh, you said they were carrying it for more than one day, then what happened? Uh, now they were all taken down, so you cannot find it even in the Lens mag magazine. Actually, Lens website was down yesterday, so uh, somebody don't want this to, you know, uh, to go too far away, too far, and be in control. So they must take it down. But uh, you know, the the impact is already there. Were you, uh, you know, were you expecting it to get taken down? Oh yes. Because, you know, usually um, they needed to do some damage control because, uh, you know, the purpose is uh, probably, uh, I cannot, you know, think for them, but, uh, you know, uh, at least it has two impact. One is on the re-education through labor system. Uh, you know, let the whole Chinese people see how evil this system is. So it will be one, you know, Results. Another result is uh, the legal, the re-education re through labor, especially Masanjia labor camp, is the symbol of the persecution of Falun Gong for the past 13 years. So it will make those people who are responsible for the persecution, like Jiang Zemin, Luo Gan, and Zhou Yongkang, very, very uncomfortable. Well, let me go back to that in a second. First, I want to ask about, you know, you mentioned uh, this will kind of open Chinese people's eyes to what's going on in the re-education through labor system. What were some of the reactions from people in China? Uh, most of the reaction is about the, uh, the system, but uh, more people will think about other, um, like uh, jail system or even the Chen uh, Guan, like uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the, the the metropolitan like police. It's not police, but yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, uh, enforce, you know, to clean the street or uh, fight with the... Uh, like the, uh, the street vendors and yeah, like street that. Yeah, street vendors. So people will think about, uh, you know, everybody will think about uh, the unfair treatment of themselves by the, some kind of authority. So this is another impact. Um, but I don't think they want people to think too much about, you know, related to the uh, evenness of the re-education through labor to the party itself. So they want That's to right. kind of isolate that and not make it them think about like what the party is doing on a larger yeah, scale. Yeah, enough enough to make the point, mm -hmm. but not uh, too much to damage the party. So uh, this labor camp system. Do you think that most Chinese were unaware uh, of what goes on there? Uh, most of the Chinese actually know this system is illegal. You know punish people without uh, the legal process for three or four years put, uh, in the labor camp uh, without trial, uh, without any due process. So everybody now, I think, know this fact, but most people don't know what happened really to those who put in the labor camp. Uh, you know, like a daily uh, torture and uh, even more is uh, dep deprived uh, uh, the sleep, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, to the Falun Gong practitioners, you know, those torture are not familiar with most of the Chinese. So let me ask about um, the effect of the article. Then, do you think it's going to reach the effect that you think the the party or certain people might have wanted to kind of make the labor camp system look bad, make some people look uh, feel uncomfortable, but not go too far? 
Um, I think uh, uh, the impact is huge because you know uh, most of the website uh, posted this article got lots of response, and I think within um, two days most of them reach like uh, um, six digital at least. So at least uh, put together uh, half to one million uh, comments mm -hmm. follow those posting the article. So I think the impact is huge. So. You know, Liaoning officials are saying now, after this article made such a stir, that they're going to investigate Ma Sinjia. Do you think there, that will actually happen? Uh, they were saying in doing the investigation, but uh, if you read the article, you will see the petitioners already report to them about the torture and uh, mistreatment, mistreatment uh, in the Ma Sinjia labor camp many, many times. So it's not like the officials didn't know what was happening. They know. Uh, not only they know, because Ma Sanjia is very unique. It represents the persecution of Falun Gong. Uh, it's a symbol, as I said. And uh, all the technique, torture technique, was created in Ma Sanjia and then promoted by Central Sikhtan Office to other labor camps. So it's not uh, they don't know what happened in Ma Sanjia or other labor camps. It's their strategy. You know, to crack down uh, Falun Gong practitioners' uh, belief, you know, use this uh, torture method. It's a designed and uh, well uh, promoted method. So, learning actually learning uh, authority will respond to this, uh, you know, um, accusation. I mean, the, the article, and they will do the investigation. Uh, I would say. Because uh, you know the system was created by the Central Sixteen Office or the Ministry of Justice, and the, it's out of Liaoning Province's jurisdiction. So it's basically not something that they could control themselves. It's at a higher level, is what you're saying. If there's anything come out of the investigation, that means they want to release something. Mm -hmm. It's not really investigation because they know what happened, every detail already. So it's just. Uh, so I don't like this kind of investigation because the investigation should be investigate the detail and uh, expose every fact, you know, without. But you're saying hiding. that's not what's going to happen here. Uh, they will choose whatever they want to shoot people. That's very possible. So let me ask about, um, you know, the. Do you think this means you mentioned earlier that this report will make? Uh, people like Jiang Zemin, uh, who started the persecution of Falun Gong, very uncomfortable. Do you think that this is something that Xi Jinping is doing on purpose? Is this, there like a political background behind this? Yes, I think this is not uh, really try to uh, reform the Chinese legal system or make the uh, rule of law become uh, you know uh, part of the rule in China. Uh, I, I, will, I didn't see uh, what's going on. Uh, will go that direction that far? So. For now, but uh, definitely, it's part of the effort to get rid of uh, uh, those people. Um, you know, interfere with Xi Jinping's rule. So he's kind of trying to uh, people. Are you? We're talking about Jiang or or people who else? Uh, who else would be kind of targeted here? Um, Jiang Zemin, Luo Gan, and uh, um, Zhou Yongkang. Mm -hmm. You know, for for the past thirteen years, they are responsible for. Uh, what happened in the legal system, and uh, you know, one of the legal system, part of the system is uh, uh, forced labor camp. Even though uh, forced labor camp is part, of, is not a part of the legal system. It's extra legal system. So, do you think that you know Jiang is going to try to fight back in some way? Uh, taking down the uh, article, I think uh, part of the reason is uh, you know. Those in charge still want to keep the face of the party, and the part of the reason is uh, the resistance, f f uh, resistance from the um, security force, or uh, I would say the political and the, um, legal affairs uh, committee, mm -hmm. PIAC. Yeah, the resistance because they have their interest in this system. So they're still trying to protect themselves, yes. basically. All right, thank you, Hung Hu, for joining us and talking about this today. Uh, and thanks for watching. For more on this and other issues in China, join us at ntd.tv.